to run the track. Welcome back to Studio 516. Today we have a brand new video for you guys. This one's going to be a Blu-ray update for the month of May. And a little bit of April, because I don't exactly know which ones were April. Which ones were May. But I know a lot of you on Instagram like these videos. It was very highly requested in my DMs. And I don't want to go on too long because... This month was a monster month, and that's why I decided to do it now. So, I'm not going to do this in any order, because it's just a bunch of piles. I had Some of the stuff I bought, new, some used, some stuff was given to me from people at work that were just getting rid of some stuff. So, first, we got Cheaper by the Dozen 2. Nothing compared to the first one. It's actually pretty bad, but I got it for like $2, so there we go. Speaking of bad, Sharknado. Some people really love these movies. I'm not one of those people. I don't even think I've actually seen any of them. But someone at work brought in a big box of movies and said, take what you want to everyone and figured it's free. Might as well watch it one day, see what the hype is about, or what what it really is going to be about. Because, come on, it's, it's a cheap sci-fi movie. Another free one is A Walk Among the Tombstones. I'm a fan of Liam Neeson, but I never had any, like, urge to watch this movie. But for free, maybe one day I will I get in the Liam Neeson mood and not want to just watch Taken. And there's another Liam Neeson movie on this list that I actually have seen. So we'll get to that later. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. A movie that I haven't seen yet, but I've heard such great things about it. Like an early Robert Downey Jr. And we got Batman and Iron Man together because Val Kimmler is in this. But I heard it's a, um, like a buddy cop film. Really fun movie I have seen. The Upside, I saw this in theaters, and I actually really, really enjoyed it. It's a fun, nice story, really sweet moments, some drama here and there, kind of really funny at times, and just a very enjoyable movie. Getting into some movies that my girlfriend picked up, because this one didn't intrigue me much, but she wanted to see it, she loves horror movies. The Prodigy, that's all I have to say about it, because I really didn't have any expectations of watching this but eventually i'll put it on a war classic that i haven't seen in a long time apocalypse now i already owned it but i wanted the slipcover because it was really cool i know that's stupid and some people don't get that but i found it for like two dollars so i rebought it i'll just sell the other copy or give it to a friend I Shall Not Grow Old. This is a movie I've been really excited to watch. I missed it in theaters. There was nowhere near me was really showing it except in the city. And to go all the way there for a movie is a big hassle. So I ordered this on eBay, region free. Uh, and I'm, I'm really excited. I like documentaries and this one's really interesting to take film from back in World War One, World War One and restore it and color it to make it look like new i'm very interested and peter jackson's done a lot of great things in his career a movie that i waited on for a long time because i didn't want to pay full price i did see this in theaters and i did enjoy it for what it was but it wasn't something i needed right away and or on 4k or anything like that so i got a simple favorite it was on sale for around 10 bucks and i sold the code so probably made it around five or something like that and it was really enjoyable different definitely different and i think you should check it out if you're into anna kendrick or blake lively another movie that i didn't really have an urge to see that that much but my girlfriend loves the first one i enjoy the first one is happy death day to you uh, I feel like this did not have to have a sequel, but 
you know, if it makes money, if it sells, you might as well make another one because money. And that's really the only reason we have this movie. But the first one's good. This one's one I actually really wanted to see, Escape Room. And I have to say, after watching it, I really, really, really like this film. Up until the end. The end kind of goes off in a direction that I wouldn't have went in. But it's still a, a great watch and a fun movie. This is a foreign release of Pulp Fiction. A movie that I actually don't love as much as everyone else. But Tarantino is one of my favorites. And I've never seen this in person. Like an Asian release. And it was cheap. Like four bucks. So it's pretty cool. It's a weird slip. And I love Tarantino. I went and stopped at Big Lots, and I love Elizabeth Olsen. Big crush on Elizabeth Olsen. So picked up Silent House. Probably really crappy. It really looks crappy, but Elizabeth Olsen. Been wanting to check this out just because of Leonardo DiCaprio and Clint Eastwood directing it. J. Edgar, to be honest, I'm not really even sure what this is about. But I found it for a cheap price, like three bucks, and it had the slip, three bucks. I think it even had the code, but it was expired. But three dollars, had to pick it up. Another girlfriend pickup, big Harry Potter fan, Daniel Radcliffe in The Woman in Black. Probably a basic horror movie that like every other one, but oh well. This one I picked up... Purely because of my childhood, Dragon Ball Z, Br Super Broly, and I watched it. It was, I, I, it felt, it brought me back to when I was a little kid, and that's all I wanted it to do. Was it great? Probably not, but it was, it was fun enough. To watch. It was like an hour, hour fifteen, something like that. And I, I don't regret it. It was, it was fun, fun enough. A movie that I bought, then realized I don't even have a player that can play it. But A Woman of Paris, because my girlfriend loves Charlie Chaplin. Even that she's not seen many of his films, she just really was interested in watching this. So, now we gotta buy it again. But, oh well. Another girlfriend pick up, Mamma Mia 2, because I don't even want to watch the first one. This one was a pretty good find. Bad Words, starring Jason Bateman. I've seen it, but I don't fully remember it. I don't even know if I've fully seen the whole movie but I got this for a dollar so can't go wrong for a dollar and it was pretty funny one of my favorite pickups of the month as for new releases that I haven't seen before it was fighting with my family I thought this was a really great fun and kind of there was a lot of drama to it and it actually worked it wasn't like corny about the WWE and me growing up, I was a huge WWE fan, so this really worked for me. It it hit all the notes just the right way. These two movies are some of my favorite comedies of all time. Well, the first one is, but the second one's really good too. American Pie 1 and 2. And I got each of these for under $5. Probably like 6 combined. And you can't go wrong for two great comedies. After these two, they kind of fall off. But I still enjoy the franchise. These piles we'll get into is TV. So, first off the bat, a series that I never watched until I bought this box set. And I'm only up to season four. I watched three seasons in two weeks. And I have to say, I am not disappointed. The hype is real. Everyone should watch this show. I haven't seen anything towards the end. I don't know how disappointing it gets. But I don't care. I'm just looking forward to getting there. And I don't regret buying this. I mean, it was a little expensive. But totally worth it, in my opinion. The amount of hours you can get wrapped into the show. For the price I paid. I think it was $100. Then I sold the codes for 30 bucks. Not a bad purchase, in my opinion. And then my girlfriend picked up all, well, not all the seasons, but a lot of the seasons of American Horror Story, a, a, a show she watched, I think, up to season four or five, and she's been meaning to catch up on, and I think she got all of these for, like, 
25 30 dollars if i can remember and that's one two three four five six the first six seasons and maybe one day I'll check it out. I, I've watched a little of the first season. It just never clicked with me. But maybe I'll give it a chance. This is a show that I used to love. And I'm disappointed that I don't love it anymore. But I had all of them on DVD. And I found these cheap enough to get the Blu-ray. Just because I'd rather have them in better quality. Walking Dead Season 5, 4, 3, and the first season. It's a nice little open thing. So, and I paid like $25 for those seasons. Maybe even less, I think 20 So, it's worth it in my opinion. Moving on to another one of those Asian slipcover things. But this one plays in my player. And I think the other one will too. I just haven't tried it yet. The Deer Hunter, a movie I've seen years ago, but I don't remember. I just know... De Niro is great in this film, and it's been it was nominated for five Oscars. It says I don't know if it won because I, I didn't look into it. But Deer Hunter, a movie that's one of my most anticipated of the year, and I still haven't gotten a chance to watch it because it's two and a half hours long. But Dragged Across Concrete, the follow up to. Uh, Brawl in Cell Block 99, a movie that I actually didn't love. Everyone hyped it up so much. I watched it, and I didn't really follow why everyone loved it. But I'm really excited for this. Mel Gibson's such a great actor. I don't care what he's done personal life. I'm not his best friend. I just like watching his movies. Another Girlfriend Pickup, one I will definitely not be watching. Maybe I'll watch it with her. You gotta do what you gotta do. But Miss Bala, because my girlfriend loves Gina Rodriguez, because she watches Jane the Virgin. Yay. Yippee. A movie I've been looking for for a long time, for a good price, and it had the slip, a lenticular slip. Woo. Minority Report. And I haven't seen this in a long time. I have seen it, but I don't remember it at all, to be honest. Another great find would be True Romance. I actually haven't seen this, but I got this for $8. And if you're a Blu-ray collector, you know that this goes for... Right now, it's $50 on Amazon, because it's out of print. And 8 bucks definitely worth the pickup. And I love Tarantino. I know he wrote this, and it has a great cast. So I'm sure it's great. Another movie I haven't seen, but $3, Zoolander. I know the sequel was horrible, supposedly, but heard this is great. I don't think I'm going to like it, but I'm going to watch it because it's a quote-unquote comedy classic. A movie that I have seen parts of. I didn't love it, but for the price, everything must go. I heard some really good things about this as well. And... Will Ferrell in a more so dramatic role. Yes, it's a comedy, but there is a lot of emotion behind this portrayal or this character. A classic, the late Robin Williams, Miss Doubtfire. Love this movie. Such a great movie. Maybe not my favorite Robin Williams performance, but it is definitely up there. Same with Jumanji, Hook. Five dollars. I've heard some crazy things about this. Girlfriend loves horror movies, so eventually we'll get to watching it. Found footage 3D. This is probably horrible, but for five dollars, I like some cheesy horror movies, and that's what this is. A classic that I've never seen but I want to see, just because of The Shape of Water, if you get what I'm referencing, The Artist. And it's won five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. So, it's probably great. It's going to take a while to actually watch this, because when am I going to be in the mood to watch The Artist? But eventually I want to check that out. One of the most underrated movies of 2019 so far would be Arctic. 
it's in the same style or type of film as All Is Lost by with has Robert Redford stuck on a boat. Not a lot of dialect, but you just see a guy who's going through the worst situation in the world, being trapped alone not much food, nowhere to really go, and you have to find a way to survive. And it, it killed. It's a great movie. A movie I haven't got to watch yet, but I'm definitely going to be watching this soon because I, I love history and space and all of that. That was the only subject I was actually pretty good at in school. And that's Apollo 11. That's a documentary on the moon landing and how we got there, and how it took, what it took to get there. And First Man last year was one of my favorite movies, so to follow up with this, very excited. Another cheap buy, because I have a few used Blu-ray, DVD, CD stores near me. Not many, but a few. Macbeth with Orson Welles. I believe I watched this in school. I'm not sure but i got on a real classic film uh kick lately at least buying them because i, I bought a lot of classic films as you can see throughout this update like citizen kane what's considered another orson welles movie what's considered the best movie ever made by some or at least on imdb i believe it's the best movie ever made but i got this cool digi book of a movie i've never seen but as a film buff, you have to watch the classics, and this is a classic. Whew, almost done. Not really. Chariots of Fire, another digi book. Um, my girlfriend ran track in high school. I believe there's some. This has to do with some track and stuff like that, or the Olympics. And it was cheap enough, and we decided why not buy it? We'll watch it one day. I've heard about it, at least. It's not a total blind buy. A movie that, if you watch our top five war films of all time, All Quiet on the Western Front, a movie I haven't seen, but Justin and Chris have watched and highly regard. So I saw it, and I was like, you know what? Like eight bucks, I'll pick it up. Give it a watch one day. Another digi book, Abbott and Costello, Buck Privates. I've seen a few of their little skits, like who's on first and all that. But for like I said, cheap when they're cheap, it's hard to say no to some of the classics. You want to, as a film buff, you want to know what film was before you were around. And Abbott and Costello is literally before, like, modern day Hollywood was how it is now. There was no blockbusters back then. So I'm definitely interested in checking that out. Another great classic film would be The Bridge on the River Kwai, what I've seen scenes of, I think, in school when I was in film study, but I never fully watched this through. But I know it's great. It has a great cast. Alec Guinness is in it. Uh, William Holden. I've seen him in a few things. I, don't, I can't really put a face to him right now. And Jack Hawkins. It's, I'm definitely going to check that out. And for this big box set, digibook thing it was like seven bucks it's hard to say no to those just like this one jack nicholson one flew over the cuckoo's nest i have seen this don't remember it at all it was way too long ago but i got this set for twelve dollars and it comes with everything and it's it's solid box set and it's such a classic i've I know people love that movie as Jack Nicholson's best. Right now, I have The Shining as it, but you never know. Maybe those things will change. I got two steelbooks this month for 4Ks. This whole pile is going to be 4Ks, and that's Field of Dreams. Great classic baseball movie. And How to Drain Your Dragon 3. What I love this series. I'm not sure which one's my favorite. This one is, is amazing. It's a great way to close this chapter but i'm not sure which one's my favorite uh, i'll be honest two was great one one's probably my weakest i think it's between two and three but i'm not positive i gotta rewatch the whole series man on a ledge 
another 4K that came out this month. It's a solid thriller. It's nothing special. It's kind of basic, but it's fun. It's a really fun movie. Talking about basic and bad, Godzilla. The 98 Godzilla, I think it's 98. 98 Godzilla, it's rough. He, lo he looks like a baked potato getting thrown around the city. It, it looks really bad. But I kind of have a, heart, a place in my heart for this one. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing it in 4K. I haven't watched it yet. Godzilla King of the Monsters is coming out this weekend. Well, actually, tonight is the first night for it. I, w I might try to watch this one in the 2014 one leading up to that. The Lego Movie 2. I love, 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 love the first one. This one was pretty disappointing, to be honest. It was very weak. It made me laugh at times, but it, it lost its muster from the first one. The Kid Who Would Become King. I got this really cheap, like 10 bucks after I sold the code. And it kind of looks like a fun movie. Like, it's fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I know a lot of people don't go by that. But I, I do usually agree with Rotten Tomatoes for the most part. So, why not? I want to check it out. It's 4K. It was a good price. My girlfriend picked this one up because she absolutely loves this movie. And we're actually going to see Hugh Jackman in concert next month to perform the songs from The Greatest Showman and a few other films. But she was dying for the 4K, so we found it, I think, $15. It was on sale, and she just brought it home one day. It's a solid movie. I, I had fun with it. Hellboy 2, a movie that should have got a sequel because I haven't seen the new one, and I've heard nothing but bad things. And Del Toro wanted a sequel. Perlman wanted a sequel. The people wanted the sequel, and we didn't get a sequel. We got a remake, what supposedly is horrible. So everyone lost. Everyone. One of the best classic movies of all time, and I believe this came out the, uh, the year before I was born, 94. Forrest Gump. Just nothing needs to be said. Another movie that I haven't seen, classic, A Few Good Men. I just know the one scene from it. Is that this movie? I don't even think that's this movie. You Can't Handle the Truth? Is that this movie? Tell me in the comments. It is drawing a blank. But I know that scene, and I think that's from this movie. Another movie I haven't seen, but $15 for the 4K. Sold the code for around 5 I think. Crank. And I've always wanted to see it. I love Jason Statham. Girlfriend thinks this movie looks stupid. I'll watch that alone one day. I mentioned earlier Liam Neeson. Cold Pursuit, a blind buy this month, and I have to say this is really fun, really fun movie. It's way better than a lot of the Liam Neeson roles we've been getting lately. A lot of controversy behind this too because of things he said in interviews, but I stand by my boy Liam Neeson. I love him as an actor. He's great. Great war film, Black Hawk Down. I still yet to watch this in 4K, but I can't wait. Such a good brutal movie about like the dark parts of war especially it's based on true events a, a blind buy that i actually watched this month backdraft and i love this movie it has some 90s cheese in there but you know what it was fun i love kurt russell and everything he's in de niro is great and even william baldwin not alec but william baldwin great it was a fun movie loved it every second of it Classic horror movie. I have watched this on 4K, but I was kind of dozing off in and out, so I'm going to rewatch the 4K and see how good it is. But what what do I need to say? It's a classic. Also, Backdraft has a great transfer. A movie I just recently got because it wasn't in any stores by me, Hannibal, and I love Silence of the Lambs. And I haven't seen this one yet, but I, I'm checking that out very soon. Last pile. For a dollar, I found Assault on Precinct 13. The reason it was a dollar is it doesn't play on U.S. players. But it's a pretty cool package, and I figured just to have on the shelf as like 
a little picture or something. It, I know, it's stupid, but it was a dollar. This is something I found at the used store recently. This pile is getting into some of the more exclusive titles like Arrow, Criterion, and Scream Factory, Shaft Factory. And I picked up one of the original Arrow video releases because these are out of print. They're not available anymore. And I found this for 10 bucks. Dario Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Never heard of this film, I'm going to be honest. But Arrow videos don't go cheap, and especially out of print Arrow videos that come in the original old packaging. And I do like a lot of the Arrow video movies, even the cornier, weirder ones. Scream Factory, or this one's a Shot Factory, Piranha, the original Piranha. And I have yet to watch this, but five bucks and it's a Shot Factory. And I, I like the remakes. They're, they're bad, but uh, I have fun with them. A movie I forgot to get when it came out, and I've been looking forward to re-watching, because I've seen parts, bits and pieces, colors. And Shout Factory released this, I think, over a year ago, and I forgot to pick it up, and I saw it at Best Buy, out of all places, so I had to pick it up. Me and my girlfriend picked up together. We split this one because we both wanted to watch it. And I wasn't fully in on the price it was. It was $25. But these do shop factories are a little more expensive. When Harry Met Sally, I've yet to see this movie. I know. I haven't seen a lot of classic movies. But now I bought it. So I will be watching it. And it's a shop factory. And I love shop factory. I really want to get Get Shorty. I've seen that one, and I really want to get that one, and I f keep forgetting to order it, but eventually I'll, I'll get on it. Now, these, the rest of this is Criterions, and I got these all for under, under 15. They're around 12 each, and then one of them was 25, but you'll see which one. Diabolic, a movie that I've seen in a lot of people's collections, but I've never watched, but Reading the synopsis for this, it's really interesting. And I got this for, I think, eight bucks. And I'm I'm so into everything Criterion. I, I know I don't want them all because they're very expensive movies. But I look at this as more of a lesson in film rather than just a movie. You learn so much watching through the Criterion collection. Another blind buy that I never even heard of, but the, the back of this just... The synopsis got me the black stallion it sounded so interesting let me know if you guys seen this movie francis ford coppola presents directed by carol B B ballard but it just looks like such a great like unique movie about like bonding that that's all i'll say weekend funny story about this one this one was recommended to me when i went to barnes and noble's Last Criterion sale, I think it's November, it was our last one. A guy just had, we had like a 40 minute conversation and he was just throwing out a bunch of recommendations. And I've heard this is batshit crazy. Like there's no, like you don't really know what's going on. You're just watching and things just go crazier and crazier as it goes. And I, I can't wait to check that out. Speaking of my girlfriend's obsession with Charles, well, Charles Chapman, Limelight. She wanted it because Charlie Chapman. That's pretty much it. I, I like Charlie Chapman, too. I think he's revolutionary for what film was back in the day. But getting into our last title, it is America Lost and Found Criterion Set. It comes with, I think, six or seven movies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven movies. Criterion's very expensive, if you didn't know. This set, I probably think, is like 80 to to $100. Got it for 25 Only movie in here I've actually really heard of is Easy Rider. But if I were to buy Easy Rider on the Criterion sale from Barnes & Noble, guess how much it would be? $20. So for $5 more to get a cool box set with a bunch of classic... American films, I just had to, I had to pull the trigger. 
But that's it. That's May's, May and a little bit of April's haul. And I think I'm going to keep doing these videos to share my love of collecting with you guys. Now i got to put all these back on the shelf. It's one of the most annoying things about collecting Blu-rays. And that video will be coming up soon in the future. Top 5 most annoying things about collecting Blu-rays. But... Leave a like, comment down below what your favorite things I picked up this month. What what did you pick up? Subscribe. We're going to be doing more Blu-ray videos, some Criterion videos, along with reviews, reactions, and so on. And I'll see you guys next time on the next video, hopefully. Or even if you're just going to stick around for some Blu-ray updates. See you on the June haul, what might be a great one as well, because my birthday is in June. So I might go a little crazy. But see you next time.